Hi weaving friends, if you have been following me on social media or been following my blog you'll know that I've had a Merix loom on my wish list for some time now and recently I did receive a parcel in the mail that made me very happy. I chose the Big Sister from Merix which is a 16 inch loom that you can see here and I thought that some of you would like to know a little more about this loom. Before I get started, I just want to let you know that this is not a sponsored video. I did not receive any payment or kickbacks from Merix for doing this video. I just wanted to share with those of you who are interested. I know that many of you are, you've already expressed that to me and I know that some of you already have one of these looms but haven't used it all that much yet. So first of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the loom. Then I'm going to tell you the things that I love about it. And then last of all, I'll tell you the things that I'm not so sure about. They're not necessarily negatives. They're just things that were perhaps not as I expected. Okay, so as you can see, this is a loom that's made out of copper pipes and metal. One thing that I have found already through using this loom, and the thing that struck me when I was warping it and um, putting on the heddle bar and all of the bits and pieces was just the cleverness of design. As a weaver I don't think that I could ever come up with something like this. It also struck me that this is a really beautiful loom to look at. I love the copper, I love how it gleams and complements the work as you're weaving. It's really nice to weave on something that looks beautiful and I love the sturdiness of it as well. It, it's actually quite heavy and it has these feet at the back that really make it sturdy. So you can fold the feet in like this or have them out for if you're propping it on a table. But it's really sturdy and these feet have those rubber ends so it doesn't go slipping about anywhere. I was talking about the cleverness of the design. I'm just going to point out a few things that I really love. It's a simple loom to use, but it's very smart and intuitive as well. So the tensioning is done with these wing nuts here. And you basically just either wind them down for a looser tension or up for a tighter tension. And Having done tapestry for some time on my rigid heddle loom, I really appreciate the tightness of the tension that you can get on this loom. It's really fantastic and it solves some of the problems that I was having with doing tapestry on the rigid heddle loom, which I talk about in another video, and I'll link to it if I can remember to, that you know I'd sometimes have ripples and that sort of thing in the work because I couldn't get the tension tight enough. You just need a super drum tight tension for tapestry and this loom certainly does that. So that's how we do the tensioning. You can also extend the loom upwards um, by using these bars. They go up and down uh, to a certain extent. So this is the 16 inch Big Sister and I was tossing up between the Big Sister and the little guy. The little guy's 12 inches and now that I have this big sister I'm super glad that I pay the extra money and chose to go with the slightly larger size. I only have a fairly small tapestry on here at the moment but I can do this kind of width and uh, I love that I have the option of doing that. There is a warping bar here or a heddle bar and this is really clever as well. This is part of the shedding device. You can actually buy them without a shedding device, which means that you would be weaving in and out, in and out. But with the shedding device, you change the shed. So I'll just give you a quick demo of how that works. This is the little lever that you use for changing the sheds. You pop it behind and it just sits there and opens up that shed. You probably can't see it that well at the moment because I've got a tapestry on there. And then if you want to change the shed again, you take it down and it changes the sheds for you so it's like a rigid heddle loom in that aspect that it has two sheds and they're really easy to switch between them um, and I really love that it makes things much easier and it means that you can weave faster too. Now up the top 
this is really awesome they have these springs that provide for what don't you want to be weaving at and this a single loom comes with 8 12 14 and 18 dents um, so all different size springs depending on the thickness of your yarn that you're using I went with the 12 dent for this piece and you simply just stretch the the spring right across to the other side um, insert a metal rod and then you have your spaces in which to warp and it keeps them beautifully even you don't need one of these at the bottom of the loom they just keep their alignment pretty well you can see behind here I have a bar that's like a tensioning bar and this makes it super easy I was really pleased the first time I needed to advance my warp how easy it was I just simply loosened the tension and adjusted the bar and that moved the whole lot of the weaving and um, that is very very easy to use so I started out after the loom was all put together and it does come mostly put together though you have to put on the heddle bar and put on the spring of course to choose what dent you're going to be weaving with but when it arrived to me I, re I was really desperate to get a warp on as quickly as I could I was so excited about it that I didn't really think too much about what I was going to weave on there I just thought okay I, you know I just chose a, a width and thought that's what I'll put on I just want to learn how to warp the loom so I used videos that Merrick's have and Claudia shows you how to warp and it's it's very easy to warp as well once you get used to the sort of different way of doing it but it's very straightforward and their videos are very clear and easy to follow so once I had my warp on then I had to decide what I was going to weave and I really thought I have no idea what I want to weave now so I just went with I just drew a couple of lines on the warp with texture like a sharpie and um, just started weaving I used some of my hand spun and I used some hand dyed yarn just bits and pieces that I've had sitting around and did like a very loose free form kind of piece that you can see on the screen right now the idea is it was meant to be a couple of mountains with you know like a um, very vivid sky so I wasn't going too much for techniques in that piece more just that I was really excited and I wanted to get weaving and so I did and then on the next piece I decided to do something much more structured and something that would help me to practice the techniques that I wanted to practice particularly I wanted to practice clean straight lines and just having things looking really neat so that was the idea of this piece and if you pop over to my blog I have a post which details all of the techniques that I used here and I will link to that down below I used Kirsten Glassbrook's book tapestry weaving which was really awesome to help with I've had that book for a long time now but it's really nice to just follow along her step-by-step -step tutorials and I'm pretty pleased with what I got the techniques I was going for the clean straight lines and I got that pretty well even in, in the diagonal shapes so I'm happy with that and it's also great to go through all my bags of scraps um, and just pull out anything you know even really small pieces that you can then use up in this way okay so I said I was going to go over the things that were not as I expected well one of those is kind of my fault really for the heddles I used a fairly thin linen it's about a about an 8 to size linen and I was thinking that the linen would be really strong so I made up all of these little heddles there were quite a few of them and of course if you had a wider project you'd be making even more heddles and made them all up and tied them on and it took me a really long time uh, and only one of them broke but that was enough for me to realize that that 82 linen was not really strong enough for what I wanted to do here on one of their videos Claudia uses a sort of Texolve heddle they sell them in a roll and that seems like a really good idea to me I'm not sure if I can get it here but I might ask Tracy at Knit Spin Weave because that's where I actually got this loom I highly recommend Tracy she's wonderful 
but yeah definitely you need something really strong for the heddles because all of this is under such high tension and you're changing sheds very frequently and they undergo a bit of stress it wasn't a huge deal when the heddle broke I was able to remake one and tie it on but I just wouldn't want to have that happening all the time and of course I want to have heddles that I can reuse over and over and over and not have to worry about making them all of the time it's a bit of a pain in the neck Now another thing is, well, after working on a rigid heddle loom and a floor loom and an inkle loom, the sheds are very small, like much smaller than what I'm used to. So even when I open up the shed, it's, and I'm, this is not a great example because I'm right near the, the top with the weaving now, like I'm running out of warp, but the sheds are really small. Like it's, sometimes it's kind of tricky to um, get your fingers in there. So if I'm weaving from one side to the other, then sometimes I'll need to kind of bunch the yarn along, which I expect is, you know, something that a lot of tapestry weavers have to do anyway, but it's just something different that I'll have to get used to. Something I'm not quite sure about is on the other side of this lever, there's a bolt and the bolt keeps coming loose. And I'm not sure whether I'm supposed to seriously tighten that with a little wrench or something like that perhaps someone can um, give me some advice on that because I'm not really sure how much I'm supposed to tighten it but I do find that as I'm using the lever um, every few sheds that I change I have to tighten up that bolt again and then the other thing is I sort of wanted a loom that I would be able to use on my lap and I thought that the size of this would be okay for you know sitting comfortably in a chair I like to do evening projects so sometimes I'll do knitting sometimes I'll do inkle weaving um, sometimes I'll have the smaller rigid header loom on my lap and that way I can sit with my family in the evenings we can watch a movie together whatever we're doing and I can be working on a project because these hands do not stop but I have found, found that with this loom Although the size of it would be okay for having on my lap, it's just too heavy. It's actually, with all that metal, and because it's such a sturdy loom as well, it's really too heavy and I, I don't think the design really lends itself that well to working on a lap. So that's another thing for me to get used to is I have to be sitting at a table and working upright. Now I do enjoy that. But I just had that anticipation that I might be able to use it as a lap loom as well. Perhaps with the smaller, like the little guy, um, there's even, I think they've got a five inch loom as well, like really tiny. Well, obviously you could use a five inch loom on your lap with no trouble, but for this one, it's not really going to be a lap loom. Now into the details, I know a lot of people, I've seen people leave comments on other videos or posts um, about Mirix looms saying that they're very expensive and that's absolutely true. They are expensive. This one cost me just over $400 but to me it's absolutely worth the cost for a lot of reasons. First of all it gives me a dedicated tapestry loom which I didn't have before. Secondly I love that it sits upright and I can just it doesn't take up very much space and it can just sit there. I don't have to worry about knocking it over or storing it somewhere. It's not a precious kind of loom. Uh, I love that their looms are assembled by disabled people. That's really important to me. And as I already pointed out, the, the design of this is so brilliant that I am happy and I feel that this is worth the money to me. And some people have pointed out that you can make your own copper tapestry looms and if that, that interests you, go Googling. I'm sure that there are plenty of plans and things out there and apparently you can save a lot of money doing it that way. But that's not really for me. I'm not into welding or putting things together and, um, and for me it's more about the weaving than constructing looms and that kind of thing. So I'm very happy with it. I think it's a brilliant loom. And I know I'm going to be using it a lot. I've already got my next project planned. So I hope this review helps you. If you have any questions, ask me underneath the video. I'm sure that there are some things that I've missed. And there'll also be a write-up of this over at my blog. By the way, I've got a brand new blog 
Um, it's a new website. I'm really excited about it because it's the first time that I've got my blog and all my links and everything all together in one place. So it feels much more cohesive to me. I've outgrown Blogger. I've been with Blogger for 11 years, believe it or not. And although it's been really good, my business has gotten to a point where I need something that's really functional for what I need to do. So hopefully you can go and check that out as well. I'm going to leave a bunch of links down below for the different things that I've mentioned and you can click on those if you are interested. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now and happy weaving.